Pretend this is a voiceover. Pretend you hear me talking. Think about um, what you see when you look at the ground. I mean, it is, as my friend Christian Meyer pointed out, a place we look at sometimes in moments of distraction. We don't really look at the ground, but we look away from other things. And looking at the ground is a way of refocusing. And perhaps of allowing our minds to work while we are in that place of distraction. And then, you know, my sort of, not counter, but my own method or reasons for looking have more to do not with um, looking away so better to focus on something else, but to focus on the ground in order to look away from things I didn't want to see. And all that's one thing, and fine and well. The dirt on the ground, the markings, the pieces of broken road material, sometimes pieces of metal. <laughs> um, I always think of them, or I don't always, but I think of them sometimes as all that's really left to, to, to show that we existed. Because, you know, our bodies go away, people forget about us, but there's always this these marks on the ground. Of course they're temporal because they go away too, but they're always similar enough to past marks that they could in fact stand for everybody as much as they can any one person. And there's some, <laughs> some odd and spiritual part of me, um, you know, some sort of like Zen outreach inside of me that feels like for everybody I can't acknowledge and for everybody maybe I can't even like, if I can pay attention to the ground and do honor to that, in that way I'm doing honor to the people who have passed and because the ground represents or in my mind stands for the possibility of everyone else, there's room for me to respect and acknowledge. Um, everyone in all time and every place. Um, it sounds like an easy way to get off of having to deal with individuals, but that isn't what happens at all. It's kind of humbling to think these things. It's kind of humbling to think that the lack of marks that I leave are equal to the lack of marks that a person I'm looking at might leave and I feel like it gives me a way to be open with people and to understand that we're not that far apart anyway, even while I'm speaking with them, even while I'm disagreeing with them, or even while I'm flirting with them, or even while I'm falling in love. Is it something like an exchange? Do the marks that I leave get exchanged with the marks that somebody else leaves? And in that way, does that connect us? Is that some kind of a transaction? I'm not sure. I remember a long time ago when I was a kid and I wandered and it was just you know, what I was was um, fairly desolately sad. And the ground was the place that I could focus on safely and felt like I got something in return. So there was always a lot of gratitude associated with it. Um, and as I sort of like associate with the ground my relations with people, 
there's always a certain amount of gratitude involved in those associations. And the thing about the ground is being so similar and yet each part so unique when you pay attention, you really learn to pay attention. I really learned to pay attention. I think if you look at the ground, you do. There's so many wonderfully specific things. And part of what's wonderful about them, and this is something weird that I recognized really early, but I didn't really put into words until fairly recently, is that Each of those specific things is going to disappear. I can't do anything to save it, and my saving it would destroy it anyway. <sighs> yeah, so... Out of the blue comes a thank you. Um, Alexander, Kelly, Cameron, and Aaron. Thank you for giving of what you do to help support LACE at my request. I really appreciate it. And that's an incidental part of it. The big part of the thank you is um, in those times when we visited, in those times that I asked you to think about in the work you gave, there was an exchange and there was a recognition of individuals and it was as much unspoken as spoken and and that mutual recognition of individuals as human beings worthy of recognition is, I would modestly put forth, the most important thing, certainly in my life, and I think probably the best thing you can do for anyone. So thanks for that. I took all these pictures to mark the moments of studio visits with artists in Los Angeles over 2011 and the first part of 2012. Often both before and after, and always when I felt something either emotionally, spiritually, or like my brain was just whirring and I thought, wow, I just have to, I have to mark this occasion and that's when the picture happens. There are pictures of the city, too, that you noticed. I mean, of course, studios are in cities. I think pictures of the ground. But there's others, too, and the, to me, the studio and the studio visit are expansive. Um, the four walls that delimit the space disappear because the conversations continue out into the out into the greater city of LA. And also the conversations continue through time by email, both before we visited and after. So, yeah, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, thanks a lot for watching the film. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.